My daughter was just five months old when I started going to the refugee camps in the Hawk. Yazidi women and girls had suffered terrible fates at the hand of ISIS. Though it was hard to live here, I had to go. In this chaos and crisis, there were mothers like me trying to care for their daughters. I was searching for survivors, for those who need the most help, whose bodies and lives have been just devastated. There is thousands of them. When I saw the young girls, I thought of my sister. When we were young, we were very close. We dreamed of a bright future. One day, our father came to us. It's time for you to be married. He said to my sister, she would have to leave school. No more dream of becoming an engineer. Instead, she would become a wife. She was just 14. She was denied the right to choose her own future. Others had a final say, and it sent me fuming. A fire was lit. And justice is a part of life for many of our girls and women. Violence against us takes many, many forms, from beating to genital cutting and honor killing. When I was young, I didn't know how to stop it. I went looking for answers. I went to school. I read about women's rights. And it fueled my desire to make a difference. But there were many along the way who tried to put my fire out. They would tell me, go home, find a husband but they only found the flames. Then I found ASUDA, one of the few organizations combating violence against women. There I knew I could help. With ASUDA, I opened the first independent shelter in Kurdistan and Iraq, a place where women could find safety and support. Others thought this woman should be punished, not rescued. These are disobedient women. It became so clear to me this horrors would not be suffered if our society didn't consider them acceptable. This needed to change. So I started advocating to change laws, mediating with families to end honor killing, and engaging religious leaders to help change mind. Some days, I think, things are getting better. Others, I can't believe how much is left to do. I thought we have enough challenges to overcome. Then ISIS attacked Sinjar in the north of Iraq, and entire ethnic group was being broadly targeted and terrorized. One night, I got a phone call. Thousands of women were facing a battle the world was blind to. It would be weeks before headlines reached the masses. Yazidi women were being kidnapped by ISIS, taken from their homes, their schools, and enslaved. You are my survivor. Still, they are being raped and beaten and nearly destroyed because they aren't Muslim, because they are women. Some have managed to escape. When they do, they come to us. Every day, we trade their wounds and they try to find peace. But it is not enough. Helping women heal only treats the symptoms of the larger disease. The cure is to change the way society views women and their rights. I want my little girl to live with equality and freedom. Like every woman, she deserves it. So the work continues. I continue 